Hello, this is Mr. White, and this video is on solving trigonometric equations. And as you note there on the screen, we will, uh, in one example, not be using the calculator, and in another example, we will be using the calculator. And part of your job as a student is to know when you should be uh, using it versus when you shouldn't. And if you're ever confused uh, about how to tell, please ask. All right, our first example is solving a trigonometric equation algebraically and we are asked to find the values, um, value or values of x between 5 pi over 2 and 9 pi over 2. That solve or solves the equation cotangent x equals negative root 3. Well, I'm going to start by trying to figure out where is 5 pi over 2 and 9 pi over 2 on the unit circle. So let's uh, draw some axes here. Oops, no. Okay, there we go, draw some axes. And let's start counting off by pi over 2. So this should sound familiar to 0, 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2. That's along our positive y-axis. Let's note that down. But then continue counting. Um, and I need you to remember that we've done one full rotation plus a little more. So 6 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2, 8 pi over 2. 8 pi over 2 reduces to, just, uh, um, to uh, just 4 pi, which is two full turns, so that makes sense. 9 pi over 2 brings us back to 5 pi over 2. We notice that those two are coterminal angles, both along the positive y-axis. So what that tells us is that if it needs to be between 5 pi over 2 and 9 pi over 2, that tells us that uh, the whole xy plane is open to us. Uh, we could be between 5 pi over 2 right here, or up to 6, 7, 8, 9 pi over 2, anywhere in between those two. So when we consider over the entire xy plane, where could the cotangent possibly be negative root 3? Uh, we should, I'm going to go over this a little bit more quickly. We should be fairly uh, comfortable with this by now by, in determining that that's going to be in either the second or the um, fourth quadrant. And we need to recognize that cotangent, which is adjacent over opposite, if it equals negative root 3, that can be either be in the form of negative root 3 over 1, or that could be positive root 3 over negative 1. Those are both possibilities here. So when I look at my xy plane, and I look in the second quadrant, I get this shallow 30, 60, 90 degree triangle here, where I have the the negative root 3 over positive 1 possibility. Or if I look in the fourth quadrant, I've got my shallow 30, 60, 90 degree where I have the positive root 3 over negative 1. So we gotta consider, we've got to consider both of those possibilities. Um, now, remember when, when I asked you to recall that we had done one full turn? So again, we did one full turn. That brought us to 4 pi over 2 and then 5 pi over 2. What that is telling us is that to get our uh, um, first angle here, I don't simply want to do this and call that 5 pi over 6. What I need to do instead is do the full turn all the way to 4 pi over 2, all the way up to 5 pi over 2, and then stop here, terminate here at that angle. So let's consider what measurement that is. That is a full turn, which is 2 pi and then plus the additional amount, this amount right here, which you should recognize by now is 5 pi over 6. So a full turn plus 5 pi over 6. Uh, I do not want you to leave your answer in that form. Uh, we are not done. Let's combine that into 1 by using uh, common denominators. So that would be 12 pi over 6. That's the 2 pi, right? Plus 5 pi over 6. That gives us 17 pi over 6. Uh, I would suggest pause, soak that in, replay if you need to uh, make sense out of all that. I, I, hope, I hope that made sense. Let me put a circle around that, though. I'm going to call that my final answer for this second quadrant um, angle here. All right, uh, let's find the other one. So for the other one, I um, um, hope that you've taken notes there and just erased some of the work so I can clear out some space here. But let's find the other uh, angle. And in that case, we would do 2 pi. It's really the same thinking. Um, hold on. 
second, let me clear this out of the way as well. So once again, we, we did a full turn. We're doing our full turn, 4 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2. Uh, we're going to go past this one and all the way around to here. So I do need you to recognize that if I were to just focus on starting at 0 and going around, I need you to recognize that what I just drew there was 11 pi over 6. But we need to add in that full turn, right? So once again, 2 pi plus the angle that I'm interested in, 11 pi over 6. Once again, common denominator, 12 pi over 6 plus 11 pi over 6. And this time the result is 23 pi over 6. And I'll put a circle around that to denote that that's my final answer. Um, and even though on your homework and tests I would not want you erasing your work, I will just to neaten up this limited screen space here. All right, so we could call that done, but I'm always encouraging you to check your work. Um, and, and I've been saying all along in this uh, um, chapter, do it without a calculator when you can, but feel free to check it with a calculator. So I'm going to do that here. Uh, I want to remind you that when we had solve equations with a calculator, uh, let me go back to this screen, we remember how we would um, take the left half of the equation and call that y1, and the right half and call it y2, and we would do calc intersect. Um, since this should not be the first time you're hearing that, again, I'm going to go a little bit more quickly than I would if I were introducing it to you for the first time. But when you look at the screen there, I hope you recognize that uh, y1, that's how I would type in cotangent into these calculators, 1 over tangent of x. y2 has got our negative root 3. Um, I do need to pay attention to the window settings. So uh, if I were to go back here and observe that th that interval right there represents my x min and my x max. So I'm going to go straight to window instead of graph. And I'm going to type in 5 pi over 2 for my x min and 9 pi over 2 for my x max. And I'm not too worried about the y min and the y max. The main thing I just need to be sure of is that the y min and the y max, I need to make sure that they um, include that they bracket this negative root 3, that that negative root 3 isn't going to be off the screen. As long as it is, I'm not going to obsess over it too much. Let's go ahead and hit graph. And since I had two solutions, I am expecting two intersections in my graph. And there they are. You can see that it intersects twice within that window uh, range. So second calc, again, I'm going a little bit quickly. If you don't have this down by now, um, come by, get it straight. I just hit number five for calc intersect. And remember, don't waste time at this point. When it says first curve, just hit enter. When it says second curve, just hit enter. But slow down when it asks you to guess. I've got two intersection points, and I want to specify which one I want. So I'm going to, now I will arrow over until I'm clearly closer to the, um, to the first intersection point, And I'll hit Enter. And the calculator is telling me that the intersection is at, at 8.901. I hope you can see that clearly on your screen. I don't know off the top of my head whether that's equal to 17 pi over 6, but I'm going to find out. And I'll remind you that that's the last thing that my calculator displays on the screen. So I can go to quit, and I can hit x right away, and it'll recall that value of 8.9 that I had seen on the calc intersect. So I'm wondering, is that the same thing as 17 pi over 6? Let's find out. 17 pi divided by 6. And there it is, confirmed that my 17 pi over 6 is correct. Uh, real quickly, I'm going to do the same thing with the other one. Um, usually I find that when I get one of them correct, it's most likely that the other one is correct too. But let's just be sure. Um, this time when I guess, um, I'll scroll over till I'm closer to the other intersection point. And I'll hit enter. This time the answer is 12.04. Let's quit and see if uh, that's the same thing as 23 pi over 6. So there's the 12.04, 23 pi divided by 6. And there it is. We have checked our work. Both of those answers are correct. OK, so we were able to do it without a calculator and check it with a calculator. But that insight of, of how, that, uh, uh, how this non-calculator approach agrees with the calculator approach lets us know that when we get to example 2 here, 
um, where we're asked to do it graphically, that even if we can't do it algebraically, we at least have that graphical means. Um, now, on first glance, it may look like this example could be done without a calculator. We see a familiar uh, um, number there. We might think, oh, that has to do with the 30, 60, 90 degree triangle, right? Well, no, I'm trying to fool you there. Uh, <clears throat> let me draw some axes again. And again, I'm going to go a little more quickly on this one. We're going to do it graphically, but I just want to show you why we need to rely on graphical means. Um, negative 2 pi would be, let's see here, negative 2 pi would be this, going backwards a full rotation, right? Whereas negative pi, my other uh, endpoint on the interval, would just be going backwards to this point. So if I want to find all the angles that are between negative 2 pi and negative pi, that means I'm looking in the first and second quadrant only. And again, I'm getting there not by going in the positive direction, but I'm getting there into the first and second quadrant by going backwards. All right? So let's just uh, uh, shift our focus to the first and second quadrant. And um, if I want to know where is cosecant going to be square root of 3, um, actually, I know that there are triangles in either of these quadrants where I could get a cosecant of root 3, but here's the deal. Remember, cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite, so that means it's the hypotenuse that would be positive root 3. So hopefully you see now that, oh, that's not really our special triangle after all. Um, we could figure out that adjacent side, but honestly, I don't really care at this point. It, it, it's not necessary for us. Um, we could tell that we are not dealing with a special triangle, so let's go just go straight to the calculator. And again, I'm going to go a little bit faster because this is similar to what I just showed you. But I'm going to go to window and say x min is negative 2 pi. x max is positive, I'm sorry, no, negative pi. Negative pi. Um, let's see, the y min and the y max, once again, won't worry about them as long as they enclose that square root of 3 that I'm interested in. I'll go to my y equals, I'll say this time for cosecant, instead of 1 over tangent from last time, I'll do 1 over sine. And down here, I'll get rid of that negative sign, and that looks good. So let's hit graph. Again, I'm expecting two intersection points. And I see my, um, and you know, that's not the best window set. I mean, I could deal with that, but I'm wasting a lot of screen space, and it's a little hard to tell what's going on. So I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and, um, Make that y min, how about negative 1? Um, the y max, let's just make that 5. And I think we'll see the, the intersection points a little more clearly. All right, so second calc number 5 intersect. Enter, enter. Um, scroll a little bit to the left to get my first point. Enter. And negative 5.667. I'm going to pull that out here. Um, second calc intersect. Scroll to the right. Oops, I'm sorry. I messed myself up. First curve, second curve. Now scroll to the right. I was wondering why that cursor wasn't moving. All right, hit enter. There is our second answer. So notice that when we're solving without a calculator, we left the answers in terms of something pi over something. But since these are not special angles, I'm going to just write the decimal. And that's something that often confuses students, that sometimes our answer includes something pi over something, and other times it doesn't. But uh, that's just how it goes. Um, the negative 5 pi over 6, let me comment. I left this picture up here because I really wanted to emphasize that we've solved for an angle in radiated measure. So that answer right there was going negative 5.66. 8 radians. So I'd write on my paper four significant figures, negative 5.668 radians. And again, that was this first quadrant angle. Um, the other answer, the negative 3.757, that was going backwards into the third quadrant. I'm sorry, the second quadrant. So negative on my paper, I'd write negative 3.757. And again, it doesn't have to include a pi. When we use our, our calc intersect, it, we, we, off, we will not write it in terms of pi. We'll just do that decimal to four sig figs and call it a day. But I wanted to remind you that those both represent angles on the unit circle, just not special angles.
So as always, I hope that all made sense. Um, try these out on your own and come on by if uh, you're not getting any of this. Notice that I'm going ahead and telling you the first one doesn't require a calculator, the second one does, but hopefully you would find that out on your own anyway. So pause the video and try these out. Okay, let's see how you did. This is the first one. Um, I showed a little bit of work there. I showed the, um, the, uh, you know, the, the representation of the shallow 30, 60, 90 triangles on the XY plane. And our final answers for that first one, hopefully you got 37 pi over 6 and 41 pi over 6. Um, I'll quickly remind you that those do correspond to points on the sinusoid. Um, so way out there between 6 pi and 7 pi, 37 pi over 6 was right here. 41 pi over 6 was right here. All right, uh, for part B, I know there's a lot on the screen there. Take a minute, see if you agree with everything. Um, you didn't have to use exactly the same y min and y max as, as, as I did here, but the x min and x max you should have set the same. Um, again, here's, uh, despite the appearances here, you would not have gotten both of those answers at the same time, but your two answers are those x values that you see there here and here, and so you should have, those represent two angles on the xy plane. Let me bring these out here. 5.052 in radian measure is down there in the fourth quadrant. Um, and I just, just for reference, I'm telling you that that's 289.5 degrees, although I didn't expect you to do that. Um, the other angle, 7.514. I'm just telling you for reference that that's 430 degrees. It's a little more than one full turn. 